So there's gonna be a series of video tutorials on Autodesk Inventor. Now, what is Autodesk Inventor? It's a program used by mechanical engineers or even industrial designers to create parts, an assembly of parts, blueprints, or even exploded views, complete with renders. So you can see a sample part that I have created and I've saved to PDF. And so we're gonna create a series of four parts, five if we duplicate one of them. We're gonna put dimensions on them and then we're gonna assemble them all together. And in doing so, we're gonna have an exploded view, a render, parts list. So let's get started. If you haven't already launched Autodesk Inventor, do so. Now you'll notice right on the startup screen that you have four areas to work with. Now a part is pretty simple, a part is just a part. And when you create a series of parts, you save them individually. Now next what you have is an assembly which is comprised of many parts put together and they're constrained or joined in different ways. Next we have a drawing and the drawing is actually our blueprint which we can complete with notes, annotations, measurements. And then last but not least is we have a presentation. The presentation can actually be like a video multimedia working um, of the 3D machine or part working with itself or an exploded view. So like anything, all files in Inventor always start with parts. So let's go ahead and create a parts. Now for the reference or the purpose of uh, this activity, I'm gonna start with this right over here, which is a bushing. Okay, so we've got our parts started up right over here, but before we do anything, one thing that drives me crazy about, about Autodesk Inventor is the mouse. So we're gonna change that right now. So what I plan to do is actually just go ahead to one of the tabs and I'm gonna click on manage. Sorry, my mistake, view. Maybe not. This program gets me a little confused sometimes. Tools, there it is. All right, let's go into application options. And then what I wanna do is on the display tab, make sure that I reverse the direction. If I don't do that, my zoom in with my scroll wheel is gonna be the opposite of everything that you've learned so far. So let's go ahead and apply that and then just close that out. All right, so let's go back into 3D model where most of our tools are. Now, Inventor works a lot like SketchUp if you ever used that before. So you always start with two-dimensional shapes and you can create three-dimensional forms. And then you can actually create more shapes or sketches on individual faces and then create 3D forms from there. So it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty easy program to use. I know it looks pretty complicated, but it's not bad at all. So everything starts here with a part with a two-dimensional sketch. Now here you're gonna see various planes. You have horizontal and two vertical planes. Best way to think of these planes is if an object is, say, a cell phone I'm designing, I'd probably do it like this because this is typically how the cell phone lays most of the time. Um, or supposing I'm doing like a, um, I guess, a hot water thermos or something like that, I'd probably use one of the vertical planes right over here. So I'm going to start off by just using one of the vertical planes. And like I said, I'm going to actually start off by creating a bushing here in this case. So as I referenced earlier, everything starts with a two-dimensional shape. I'm going to take my circle right over here. And when I create my circle, I always want to try creating right in the center. Reason being is because after it turns into a 3D form, I start orbiting around it. Um, if I have it right over here, it's going to pivot right in the center of the screen. Otherwise, it's going to kind of mess it up a little bit. Now, another thing that you can also work with in Inventor is the dimensions. As you can see, as I move smaller or bigger, I have dimensions. In this program, it's always a great idea to type in the dimensions and hit enter on your keyboard. And then there it is done. Uh, I don't want to put any other sketches on here because if I put another circle say like this I've got overlapping lines and I'm not gonna be able to turn that into a 3D object so keep things simple and then start building on it afterwards. Now one thing you can also notice too is when I created a sketch you'll notice that in my model browser it says sketch created. So I'm gonna go ahead finish my sketch and then there it is. Now with any sketch, I have to create a three dimensional feature with it. And you can see all the different 3D features here. So I'm gonna do an extrude. And by default, it's gonna come out one inch. So I don't want it that thick. I'm gonna actually just take this down to zero decimal one of an inch and hit enter and there it is. Now notice over in the project browser, browser I now have an extrusion. And if I hit the plus tab, you can see my original sketch is actually associated with the 3D feature. Now remember that you can always change things afterwards. You don't have to be stuck with what you have. So for example, if I click on here, I've got a series of buttons. Now, number one, I have edit extrusion. So I could definitely go more or less depending on what I want. 
by grabbing this or putting in a numerical value. I just want to cancel that out though. Uh, what I can also do is click on here too. And what I can do is I can actually uh, edit the original sketch. So supposedly the diameter of my circle is not big enough. What I can do is I can double click on that and I can change the dimension to two, for example, click the check mark, finish the sketch, and you can see it's larger. Now I don't want to do that either. So I'm just going to go control Z or my edit undo button for universally I screwed up. And let's just put that back the way it is. Now, another thing that I can also do is I can create a new sketch on here so I can create an additional three dimensional feature. So let's go ahead and click on this. So I don't want to edit the extrusion. I don't want to edit the sketch, but rather what I want to do is create a new sketch on this particular surface. All right, so from here, what I want to do is I want to create another circle and that circle is going to be a diameter of 0.82 inches. So let's go ahead, 0.82, enter, and then there it is. Okay, great. So now what I plan to do here again is extrude. So let me click on extrude and there it is. So I'm gonna bring the extrusion amount this time up to 0 0.9. Click on okay and you can see how that comes out. Let's see how we're doing compared to our blueprints. So if I look at my blueprint, blueprint right over here, you can see I just have to put in one more circle here and I actually have to cut it through. If you recall, these dotted lines are actually hidden lines. It just means there's actually geometry in behind the surface. And you can see this is the back view of this bushing here too. Okay, so you'll notice that I have my second extrusion and my second sketch that I can just do a mouse over. So again, with this extrusion, I can edit it. I can change the sketch. Better yet, I want to create a new sketch on the surface right over here. So let's go ahead and click on that again. Now the next circle size I'm going to create is going to be a diameter of 0 0.62 inches. Always a good idea to make sure that you type in all of your values. That way you know you're precisely working with something that's going to work for you. Okay, great. Now if I do an extrusion on this area right over here, it's going to pop out. We don't necessarily want that so much. So when I click on extrusion, you can see it comes out this way. What I can also do is I can also do what's referred to as a cut extrusion. That means I'm actually removing geometry. So when I click on the cut extrusion and I can orbit around here, you can see how it actually cuts inside of it. Now, of course, I do have this little arrow right over here. So if I wanted to put a hole through the whole entire thing, I would just keep on pulling this all the way through and click on OK. And you can see how it then comes through. Not quite, I, not quite what I want here. So I'm just going to control Z and put that back. Let's try this again with an extrusion. And I'm going to do a cut extrusion. And the value that we're going to go with is zero decimal nine. There we go, that's more like it. All right, now I'm gonna do one more sketch on here and I'm just gonna actually use my text tool to do a cut extrusion and maybe put a part number on here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's click on here, create a new sketch. I'm gonna use my text tool and I'm just gonna just draw a box like this and I can make my font larger or smaller in this case, it's just about one eighth of an inch. Uh, and of course, this would be pretty close to a quarter of an inch. So I'll just keep the default size in this case. And I'm just going to type in parts number one. And you'll notice that it's going on to three different lines. And that's a bit of a problem. Maybe I need to make my box a little bit bigger. So let's try that one more time here. So let's make this much larger. Okay, and let's try going parts one still wants to run off to the side so you know what let's actually just even make this just a touch smaller i'm going to go zero decimal one there we go click on okay hit my check mark and now what i want to do is do another extrusion here now you'll notice that the sketch is not associated with any 3d features so we're going to do that right now so let's go extrude and we definitely don't want that to uh, go out all the way like that. So we're going to do a cut extrude, but it's not going to be extreme. It's just going to be kind of engraved or etched in here ever so slightly. And then click on OK, just like that, because we don't want to see through the other side. All right, so we're finished our part. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just quickly save this here. So let's save this. For the purposes of what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to go ahead and save on my desktop. We're going to have lots of files. You can move these afterwards. So I want to call this right here, pushing. 
and you'll notice it's being saved as an IPT, which is your inventor part file. Let's go ahead and click on save. All right, so that concludes this lesson. In the next video, we're gonna create another parts and we're gonna use some other tools and features. So stay tuned.